It is an absolutely gorgeous day on the loveliest village on the plain. Jordan Hare Stadium, over 80,000 on hand despite the struggles for the Auburn Tigers. These fans still turning out in droves. Arkansas and Auburn, an old fashioned SEC West battle coming your way in a matter of moments. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending on where you are. I'm Dave Neal. This is former Ole Miss great Deuce McAllister, Andrea Carter down on the sidelines will join us, join us in just a moment or two. But Deuce, let's talk about running backs. I think that's a good topic for you. We've got two of the best in the league, and Rocket Sanders, Tank Bigsby, two guys certainly that carry the load for their teams, but let's start with Rocket Sanders. What makes him so good? He's chasing 1,000 yards down here. We're only in week eight. Yeah, I think when you look at it overall, it's just his body of work of how he plays this position. And you have to understand, he is not a natural running back. He is still learning this position, but when you look at it, he does an outstanding job with his vision and just the hesitation, the patience that he has, but he also has power. And I think when you talk about a running back, you have to be able to have have some power here he shows you his ability to be able to break tackles not just one tackle numerous tackles to be able to score but Dave when you talk about Rocket Sanders he doesn't have a nickname of Rocket just because it's the speed and here you see him have that long speed he's got a nice little stride he's a former track guy and that's where you know that, that the power to speed really comes in well we go from a rocket to a tank now tanks numbers earlier this season really not that impressive but he got it going a couple of weeks ago against Ole Miss. Well, he definitely got it going. And I, the, the one thing I love about Tank Bigsby is his ability to push forward. So when one guy's hit him, he is normally going to always fall forward for a yard or two. Here, he does a nice job of being able to be inside, break the tackle, but it's the stop and start ability to be able to have the speed to cut back and still be able to score. He's a hard back to take down as well. They're going to need him big time today if they want to have some success against this Razorback team. Well, down on the field is Andrea Carter. Let's go downstairs right now. Hey, Andrea. Hey, Dave. Thank you so much. Listen, when you look at this matchup, it really is a tale of two quarterbacks in opposite situations, starting with Arkansas's quarterback, K.J. Jefferson. He is a veteran. This is his third year in the system. Head coach Sam Pittman said he is the catalyst for the run game. But last time out, you mentioned dismantling BYU. He threw for five touchdowns. The staff said he is playing at a very high level. They're giving him even more control of the offense. For Auburn, Robbie Ashford, their quarterback, is a redshirt freshman. He has not played very much football. There's going to be some growing pains with him, but head coach Brian Harson said he has had his best week of practice after struggling against Ole Miss. His biggest focus is taking care of the football, guys. Yeah, I think we heard that more than once in our meetings yesterday with the Auburn staff. Is if we hold on to the football, this is a completely different scenario here in 2022. They've put an added pressure on the boys the last couple of weeks to try to clean up that area. We'll see if they do. Now, Arkansas won the toss. They want the football. And say so they will get it first today as the sun peeks out right as we kick it off. A perfect setting for some SEC football today. So here comes this Arkansas offense that's averaging over 32 points a game. They have just been dominant in the rush game with 240 yards per game. They're averaging 488 yards of offense and still moving at a rather quick, brisk quip, uh, clip offensively. And Dave, for me, it really starts with the quarterback. You know, if KJ can be able to run the football but also distribute it to those receivers, that's where this offense is best. So they'll line up. Hazelwood in the backfield. K.J. Jefferson tries to throw it. He's in the grafts, gets the pass away. Are they going to say, are they going to throw a flag? That's got to be a grounding, I would think. Pressure came from Owen Papo right out of the gate, putting some heat on K.J. Jefferson. Hey, we'll take another look at it, and you have run action, so it's really a play action. But Owen, he does a nice job. He's coming off of the edge, and, you know, somebody's got to be able to account for him. And so if you're going to run that action, Jaden Hazelwood, he's got to be the guy that slows him down a little bit. Capo with his first sack this year. Sanders makes one man miss but can't make the second. He'll pick up five yards. Simpson making the tackle for the Auburn Tigers. Boy, it's an it's a interesting dynamic in this one. As well as Arkansas runs the football, that has been an area that Auburn has really struggled in. They are last in the conference, 119th in the country, giving up over 200 yards a game on the ground. 
Well, there is Rocket Sanders. You talk about patience, kind of vision. Showing it all right there to pick up an extra 11 yards, making it a manageable, excuse me, fourth down with the loss of down after the sack, but now they'll have to punt it away. So exactly what Auburn wanted, really, right? Come yeah, it's out, definitely what they want. Get a stop, force yeah, a punt. It, it, exactly, and I think when you are able to have, you know, the first play to open up a game with the sack, it puts you behind the chains, and, you know, you saw – uh, Arkansas was able to run the football and get some positive yards, but not enough, obviously, to make up for the loss of downs with the sack. Reed Bauer back to punt, averaging. Going to get a delay of game. It's going to be a delay of game. Delay of game, kicking team, five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. The start he was hoping for. These early games, I've done enough of them over the last 25 years to know that the visiting team generally has the advantage in these early morning kickoffs for whatever reason. Matter of fact, I've done a couple of Arkansas games, Auburn games, that where Arkansas's come in here and shocked Auburn. It came in highly ranked, but Arkansas found a way. Boy, not a good kick from Bauer. That one will. Settle out of bounds. Let's see where they end up spotting this. Close to the 45. They're going toward midfield right at the 49-yard line. My goodness. A 27-yard punt for Bauer. And now you get a short field for Auburn. Boy, this couldn't have been drawn up any better. Well, when you talk about Auburn, you know, offensively, you, you come out, first play, you get a sack. Then defensively, um, you're able to not allow them to get a first down. And offensively, you start at, at almost midfield. And so you talk about Robbie Ashford. Being the starting quarterback, well, he has his offense at midfield. See if they can make a couple plays here. First down and 10. Ashford, this is where he is so dangerous. He'll have it into Arkansas territory, picks up nine and a half. He's at the 42-yard line, tripped up there by Terry Hampton. It'll be second down in about a yard. Ashford on the year has rushed for 310 yards and three touchdowns. His completion percentage, though, sits at 48%. John Samuel Schinker in motion. He'll lead the way. He'll toss sweep to Bixby. He's to the 35 and falls forward down to the 33. Give him seven, and that'll be an Auburn first down. Maybe this is just a toss crack, and so you, you talk about your fullback or your tight end being able to lead up, and that's exactly what he does. And you want to get the football into Tank's hand in space, and you see that he's able to make a play there for you. Auburn's averaging 22 and a half points per game. There goes Austin out of bounds. He'll have a, another Auburn first down. So the freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia, Woodward Academy. Arkansas's defense, talking to Barry Oda, their defensive coordinator, as healthy as they have been really since week one. They've been depleted in the secondary most of this year. Got some of those guys back, but Malik Chavis not with the team today. He is still in concussion protocol back in Fayetteville. Boy, nice cut back there by Bigsby. He's to the 20-yard line. He'll pick up three. Dave, Arkansas defensively is saying that the football yeah. came out, and that's why, you know, they picked it up. They're starting running. You have the officials. We'll take another look at it here. But they're saying that this football came out, and they're holding them up, and it does come out. The question will, is going to be did they blow the whistle to stop as far as play is concerned. And you can see the ball comes out, but the the, the question is going to be did was the play blown dead? And so after the play, Robbie Ashford, he ends up tackling one of the uh, Arkansas the ruling on the Defenders. field is the ball carrier was down. It'll be second down for Auburn. And there's the ruling on the field as far as the ball carrier was down. But the ball definitely came out. The question was, was he blown dead as far as his forward progress? 
So Auburn will have it right at the 20-yard line. All right, so we'll take another look at it as well. We showed you a couple looks, and, you know, you, you wonder where was the whistle in that whole situation. And that's the, that's the question, I mean, because there's no question the ball came out. But uh, the question becomes, where was the whistle? Was his forward progress blown dead? I mean, because the ball definitely comes out, but I don't know if there's a whistle being able to, being able to blow this play dead. And so one of the things that we commented on earlier was just his effort. It breaks tackles, but... You've got to be able to hold on to the football because you've got guys that are already tackling you from a defensive standpoint. They're just coming in to try to rip that football out, and that's exactly what they're able to do. So the forward progress part not going to be part of this review. It's basically was he down or not. And it's bodies flying all over the place. Hard to see if his knees were on the ground or you can kind of see his left leg. Does it? The ball is loose, and it looks like maybe, you know what, I mean, you, you take a closer look at that. It looks like he's not quite down on the turf yet as that ball comes popping out of there. And I think that's Dwight McLaughlin that's digging at the football, and he's actually the guy that ends up digging at it and then actually recovering it. McLaughlin, the transfer from LSU, getting in there, ripping the ball, and again, Fumbles have been an issue. Turnovers have been an issue for this Auburn team all year. Their turnover margin is minus 11. That is worst in the country. So let's see if we can see if a knee. Did it hit right there just a second ago? Did it bounce off the turf? Well, and the question becomes, Ooh. is the football moving as well? Is the football moving in? You know, those officials, that's a tough job to be able to you, – you've got to get it frame by frame in that situation. And is, if the football is moving uh, – Again, the ruling on the field was he was down. Correct. So you have to have conclusive evidence, obviously, to overturn that. And you talk about an Auburn offense that basically was at midfield and driving. Steve Barlow is our referee today. See, it almost looks like that knee's touching right there, like, and then it bounces up as he's kind of stretching forward. But that, that shot doesn't really show us. Is the ball coming out? Coming out. Yeah, I mean, the question is, where's the football? Yeah. Because the knee is definitely down there. It bounces up, but, you know, the question is, where's the football at once it does hit? official crew you can either be looking at the clock to see where the time is or just not enough evidence right. to be able to overturn it and here we go after further review the ruling on the field stands second down yeah I, I after looking at every angle we just looked at I don't know if there's anything in there that is uh, conclusive to say that he did fumble but I can tell you this the way Auburn has treated the turnovers this week and last week in practice, it's a good thing that was not a turnover because we might not have seen Tank for a few possessions. Yeah, I mean, from a few, few possessions, few series, he may not have been involved because they they are harping and adamant in that situation. And they give it to Tank right there, and he gets stuffed, loses a couple of yards, it looks like. Yeah, they'll spot it back at the 21 and a half, 22 yard line. Stewart and Brady come up to make the play. It's the first penetration we've seen from this defensive line of Arkansas being able to get some penetration against that offensive line. They had attacked them really on the perimeter first couple of plays. Boy, the first thing we're talking to Coach Harsh yesterday, you know, how do we get this thing going in the right direction? His first response was hold on to the football. And there's a sack. Ashford goes down. Chris Paul. A loss of eight. And just like that, a drive that had so much promise is snuffed out. 
Well, you'll see the pressure, and it's just a loop. It's a stunt, and so your guard is late just being able to bump over and pick it up as far as the left guard is concerned. So nice job of engaging on the outside, but having to, and Arkansas has too many guys on the field right now, but having to be able to get inside and the guard is just not, not quick enough. Andres Carlson to attempt a 46-yarder. This one is on the way. It has plenty of leg, but it hooks wide left. So Arkansas gets the stop. No points on the board for the Tigers. We are scoreless. 10.06 to go, opening quarter from Jordan Air Stadium. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Cam Newton, what a year he had for the Auburn Tigers. Out there in their little statue area honoring Bo Jackson as well. Pat Sullivan. Great ones here at Auburn. Here's Sanders. And he is finally wrapped up, dropped back at the 25-yard line. Nehemiah Pritchett, a loss of four. Back-to-back -back series where you have negative loss yardage as far as on first down, and so Arkansas offensively playing behind the chains. it again. What nice job by Sanders. He's kind of picking his way through the middle of that line. Simpson trips him up. But that'll be a gain of 10. So third down and four and a half coming up. Jefferson throws back near side. That one is caught by Hazelwood. Breaks the tackle. He's across the 45. The ball came out. Are they going to say Auburn has it, or was the runner down? And that's what the discussion, that's what the discussion is. They're going to give it to Auburn. The Tigers will have it in Arkansas territory at the 46-yard line. Derek Hall came up with the football. Okay, we'll take another look at it. He's carrying the football really, really loose. And you can see it at the end there. That ball comes out, I think, before his elbow or knee goes down. And he was carrying it very, very loose. Made a couple guys miss to be able to pick up that first down. But then as he gets hit, I think they punched it out right there at the end before he goes down. So it will be Tiger football. First down and 10. Ashford trying to dump it off to Bigsby. Makes the catch as it was tipped in the air. He'll get it down to the 45-yard line. Terry Hampton chasing the play. Trips him up. Gain of only two. Bigsby now with 16 receptions out of the backfield for 100 yards. Three-man look up front for Arkansas. They'll check off. Here's Ashford. He's inside the 40, falls forward close to the 37-yard line. Miles Slusher trips him up. That's a gain of eight, and he'll be just a little bit shy of the first down. Well, that's one thing right away. You see Robbie Ashford, you know, not liking what he has outside, but I mean, his ability is the second time we've seen him kind of talk the football and take off and run and make something happen and puts them in a third down short yarded situation here. But he didn't like the first read, and, you know, since you only are rushing three guys, he's able to escape the pocket. Two weeks ago against Ole Miss, Ashford 8 of 17 through the year. No touchdowns and two picks. They'll give it to Bigsby trying to get that first down. Only needed a couple of yards. Drew Sanders comes in to make the tackle. Drew with 64 stops now for the Razorbacks, and that'll be good enough for an Auburn first down. about him just falling forward. At that time, there's penetration in the backfield, but he's still able to fall forward and pick up enough yards for that first down. Yeah. 
Bigsby. He's tripped up by Slusher again. Slusher bothered by a calf injury, but good enough to go today. Latavius Brainy back there, number seven. He's been slowed by an ankle injury, but obviously good enough to go today. He's been on a couple of plays. But still going without Jalen Catalan and Ladarius Bishop. They're gone for the season with injuries. Toss sweep to Bigsby. Turns it upfield inside the 30-yard line, down to the 28. Hard running by Tank. Dave, second time we've seen them use the toss. They've done it to the right and the left until they were trying to attack this Arkansas defense on the perimeter and seeing if Arkansas can tackle in space. The other thing you've seen Arkansas defensively do is kind of use some run blitzes and try to get some penetration. They've been successful once. But outside of that in the sack, they hadn't had a lot of success with some of those run stunts and blitzes. Asper to throw over the middle, high throw. It sails over the head of Shedrick Jackson. It'll be fourth down, and here comes the kicking unit again as Andres Carlson missed from 46 his first time out. And this will be from the same spot. He pulled it a bit left. Of course, Carlson's still coming off that. It's been about a year now since he tore his ACL against Mississippi State this week. Coach Arson telling us that he finally got some of that explosion back that he has been known for throughout his career, one of the best to ever put on an Auburn helmet, he and his brother. This one will sail through the uprights from 46 yards out. Carlson now 9 out of 12 this year in the field goal department, and the Tigers lead it by three. Well, let's take you back. To October 10th of 2020, the last time Arkansas was here, the no fumble game. Arkansas fans will remember this for a long, long time. So will the Auburn fans. As Anders Carlson, after the no fumble decision, hits a 39-yard field goal with seven seconds left. That was the COVID year, of course, with only like 17,000 fans in attendance for that game. As attendance around the conference limited throughout, but one of the many games that have been very strange between these two over the years. Matter of fact, Auburn has won six straight over the Arkansas Razorbacks. Auburn leads its overall series 19 to 11 with one tie. That last Arkansas win, by the way, go back to 2015, that one took four overtimes. Fair catch call for that'll come out to the 25-yard line. See if Arkansas's offense can get it going. They've been a little slow out of the gates here. They've really, obviously the numbers tell you we got to run the football. We do it so well, better than anybody in this league. And then they give up so many yards on the game. But sooner or later, you got to try to open this up, I would think. Yeah, I think you have to open it up a little bit. I mean, you know that you're going to have the numbers in the box to say, hey, look, don't run. And they've done a pretty good job. And a lot of that, obviously, is Rocket Sanders and his ability to make people miss and the patience. But, you know, if it's me, I'm going to at least give my receivers outside a chance to make a play for me. K.J. Jefferson will fake it and throw it. This one is incomplete. A flag comes out to 45. Trying to hit Warren Thompson over there. there Nehemiah Pritchett in coverage. Pass interference, defense number 18. It's a 15-yard penalty with an automatic first down. Taking a look at it, and it's just a back shoulder throw, and it's just that left hand. Both guys really jostling it at the football as far as going after it, going after it. and I think it, it was just a pull. But, I mean, you, like I said, both guys are really jostling and grabbing and pulling each other, but that's, that's one where, hey, look, I'm, I'm just, trying to, just trying to let one of my outside guys make a play for me. Here's Sanders. That's it back to the 45 to the 46 yard line. So a nice five and a half yard gain to start this set of downs. Brought down by Burks. And here comes that tempo for Arkansas. A 
Nice catch there by Bryce Stevens. Stays on his feet, gets it to the 45. Gain of nine and a first down. Stevens now with just four catches on the year. One of those four was a touchdown. Back to Sanders. Sanders leads the SEC in rushing, averaging 124 yards a game. He's averaging over six yards per carry. He ranks 10th in the FBS in yards. He'll kick it to the outside. And he'll get out of bounds, past the line to gain. So eight and a half yard pickup there for Rocket. Yeah, well, that's the, uh, that's the dynamic in play today. Talking about an Arkansas team ranks in the top ten and then one defensively, you know, you talk about in the lower half, and that's why you see, you have seen the heavy dosage as far as usage of Rocket Sanders so far. Jefferson looking to throw, has plenty of time. Comes near side, pass caught there by Thompson. He's to the 10 and tripped up inside the 10 down at the 8-yard line. A 29-yard pickup. Puckett will run him out of bounds. It's first and goal, Arkansas. And this is just way too much time for a quarterback like K.J. Jefferson. It's an over route, and Puckett is matched up against the receiver. Just too much speed. Here's Sanders. He's to the six. Puckett bringing him down, a gain of a couple. Arkansas hasn't been great in the red zone this year. They are 13th in the conference in red zone scoring percentage. And ranks 106th in the country. Kendall Bryles, our offensive coordinator, of course, hoping the off week can kind of fine tune things in this area. Sanders, he's to the one, gets a little help from his big offensive lineman. Luke Jones comes in behind him, pushing the pile down to around the one yard line. So now it's third and goal. Jefferson takes it himself. Did he get there? I don't think he did. Yes, they finally raised the hands. They will say he got in. KJ Jefferson with the one yard touchdown run. Dave, it's not many times that you have a quarterback that's in shotgun. It's almost like he gets a running start. And, and it has to be just a ball breaking the plane. And I don't know if it breaks it, but he does get the call. Obviously, the officials, they'll get a chance to take a look at it numerous times as far as the angles. But I mean, that is a big man coming at you <laughs> and getting a, 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 some steam going behind himself as well. That's 6'3", 242 pounds. Of course, they are spinning. Really on the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. You can kind of hear some of the moans and groans from the crowd here as they look at it on the big board. And Coach Pittman on the other side, he was not happy one, one bit at all. And I was surprised that it took him that long to say that they were going to review it and take a look at it. AJ's, he's able just to take off. And, you know, I don't think he ever got an opportunity to really, truly extend the football out. I got to tell you, I don't, I don't think he got there. I, I, you know, once again, using the word, I guess, or I think, doesn't exactly work for conclusive evidence. <laughs> well, in, in, in our opinion, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go that way. Yeah, in yeah. our opinion, <laughs> right. there you, go. you know, uh, that's tough. But, I mean, for, for, for us as well, we don't have the vantage point of being right there down the line to be able to truly see it. But you talked about even the previous play for Rocket Sanders. He got help from one of his offensive linemen. That time, nobody's helping. KJ, you know, you, you're thinking that Rocket would maybe get behind him a little bit and push him forward. But he didn't get any help, and, you know, I, I couldn't really tell if he was able to extend the football. Well, I know he wasn't able to extend it completely because he had a couple of defenders hanging on to him as well. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Yeah, I just don't think there was anything there. The ruling was obviously a touchdown. I don't think there's anything there to tell you that he didn't get in. 
if he if he, if he did, it wasn't by much. I mean, you, we know that his complete body doesn't have to get in. All the football has to do is break the plane as far as to be able to cross the line. And that's what the officials call, and he stuck with it. It's Cam Little into attempt to point after. He is perfect this year, 29 out of 29. Make it 30 out of 30, and Arkansas has taken the lead. 3-10 to go, opening quarter at 7-3, Hogs. Welcome back to Auburn, where Arkansas quarterback K.J. Jefferson just scored a touchdown, and he told me earlier this week that his mom, Katori Moore, is the hardest person on him. He said she can tell when I'm thinking too much, when something is wrong with me. She doesn't hesitate to get behind the bench, get someone's attention, and have them get K.J. to look at her. He said that she came down on the sidelines during the Missouri State game and South Carolina game to fuss at him specifically. He said her biggest frustration is me not being me. She is always locked in on his performance. Man, that's tough. <laughs> it's not the coaches that KJ. <laughs> <Not> exactly. <laughs> it's mom. Uh, well, they just had his fifth rushing touchdown of the season to give Arkansas a 7-3 lead. And coming up at 4 Eastern, 3 Central time, Missouri will square off against number 25, South Carolina. That's right, those Gamecocks have won four straight games. And our SEC Saturday night matchup has 15th-ranked Ole Miss taking on Texas A&M and the 12th man over in College Station. Both those games also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. I think South Carolina, one of the surprising stories to this point in college football. Beamer ball, baby. I mean, he's got him playing, you know, with some passion and some fire. If they can keep it going against Missouri today at home. A little toss sweep. Jarquez Hunter, his first carry today, running hard. Boy, talking to the coaches yesterday about it. they love Jarquez and what he brings to the not just the game, but the practice field, off the field. He is he is 100% in. Well, he is a committed player. I mean, he is one that you go back to uh, Philadelphia, Mississippi, played over at Neshoba, Neshoba Central, and he, he is going to go hard, whether it's running the football with his special teams. He plays the game the right way. Former Mississippi High School Mr. Football. They'll fake it to Hunter. Ashford coming near side. Arkansas stretches it out. Ashford is flipped over. Right in front of that Auburn bitch. Let's see where they spot the football. They're standing around the 34, so it's going to be a yard shy. With Arthur in there making another play for Arkansas in that secondary. Yeah, and there, I don't know. You know, normally you have Robbie Ashford keeping his eyes down the field to be able to throw the football. It looked like the whole time he was just going to be committed to running that football. And all, all three possessions that they've had, he's had, he's had some type of run from there for them offensively. Third down and short. Three tight ends in the game for Auburn. Ashford will just keep it himself, and he'll get across the 35-yard line to the 37, so that will be a first down. Talk about those three previous possessions. This has been the worst starting field position for this Auburn offense, and it was just because it was a touchback the previous two you talk about great field position, bad punt, and then the turnover, they were able to start right there at midfield. Little play fake to Hunter. Ashford throwing up top, going deep. Passes thrown underneath. No flags are down. Trying to hit Johnson. Simeon Blair back there in coverage. Well, they might have had it if Ashford gets it out there in front of him. Yeah, I agree with you, Dave. You know, there, that's, that's got to be a better football. I mean, you talk about Simeon Blair just there late, and he's able to get his hand up. But if there's anything on this football, that's just a post route. And I think, you know, your receiver is going to be able to, Johnson is going to be able to go and catch this football. But the ball hangs up in the air probably a little bit too long. And that's why Arkansas was able to get the deflection or knock the football away. Auburn runs 16 plays, 13 have been on the ground, make it 14. Get it to the 41-yard line. Gain a four on the play. It'll be third down coming up. For the most part, Auburn has got push as far as in this run game. There's only been one play that was a true tackle for loss. They've attacked them on the perimeter uh, as far as against this defense, but 
Auburn has gotten pushed with that offensive front. Play Arkansas. Looks like they're trying to figure things out here on the near side. A lot of movement by the Hogs defensively. Well, that one's off the fingertips of Johnson. Fourth down coming up. Take another look at it. They're running a screen. I mean, this is just a slip screen inside, and the ball is too far up the field. That's one where, you know, from a quarterback standpoint, you can take a little bit off of it. You want to make that catchable pass for your receiver, and the football is just too far up the field. Probably still should have caught it, but, you know, from a receiver standpoint, he wants to be able to catch it and then be able to see where those defenders are coming from. Chapman to punt it away. Fair catch called for by Bryce Stevens. He'll take it at the 20-yard line. So 19 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Arkansas, a couple of drives. They're opening two drives, stalls out for the punt and a fumble, and then they march it down the field for their first touchdown. And they opened it up a bit offensively on that last possession, threw it around, had some big gains through the air. Well, I think for them it was the lost yardage on first down, the, pre the first two drives that they had. First down, you had a sack, and then the second one, it was a tackle for a loss. And so for them, they have to be able to stay ahead of the chains. A.J. Green checks in at running back. He goes in motion across the formation. K.J. Jefferson will keep it himself, trying to find a little seam between the guards out to the 25-yard line. Papo making that tackle. Papo leads the team with 60 stops. Six games in his career, double-figure total tackles. That will do it for the first 15 minutes here at Jordan-Hare Stadium, a 7-3 ball game. The Hogs trying to snap a six-game skid to the Tigers. A big shout-out to Miss Sherry, a legend in these parts for her hospitality, setting up the crew today with uh, some Halloween treats and snacks. I think there might have been a few naps taken before kickoff today after the looks of that spread. Obviously was in the wrong spot today. I yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of sweets down there. I did see at the end you did have some fruit. So, like, our, our sideline reporter, Andrea, she, she would not have enjoyed no. much of that table at all. No, that's not her speed. Now, you and I, different story. There goes A.J. Green. He is tripped up. You guys are really missing out, though, because those Honeycrisp apples – <laughs> 10 out of 10. I did have one. I might have had two. Also, the little clementines. Yeah, the fruit was on point. I always appreciate the fruit. I had the fruit gummies. Yeah, I mean, Not it's, the same, guys. It, Not the same. The Skittles. Here's KJ. Stands up in that pocket, finds a man. Caught by Hazelwood. He has a first down out to the 45-yard line. Boy, KJ just stood in that pocket and scoured sideline to sideline before Hazelwood came free. 20-yard game. When you're talking about with pressure off the edge, your offensive line sees that there's slot pressure on this particular play, and they do a nice job of picking it up. But, you know, nobody can get free against that offensive line, and KJ is able to find Hazelwood down the field for a first down. Fake the toss, come back to Hazelwood. He's to midfield, tripped up there. Boy, this is a lot going on with that play. People in motion, people moving everywhere. The one you said, the, you, you talk about having to defend the full field from a vertical standpoint as well as horizontal, and that's, that's exactly what they do. They, they fake a toss, but then they're running the screen all the way up top, uh, outside of the numbers. You know, it's just it's a lot to be able to cover. KJ Jefferson, five out of five for 73 yards. He'll take it himself, breaks a tackle. First down inside the 40-yard line. They'll spot him down at the 38, a gain of 12 for KJ. Take another look. This is a design quarterback draw. There's pressure off of the edge, and he just he's a, he does a nice job of being able to make people miss and then punishing defenders at the end. The flag Auburn, is down. Yeah, I think Auburn's going to get caught with 12 men on the field. Illegal substitution defense. 12 players on the field at the snap. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Well, we talked to 
Jeff Schmetty, the defensive coordinator. This is a tricky, you know, Auburn doesn't have a whole lot of depth, so they got to pick and choose their spots to sub. And you just felt like they were going to get caught once or twice today. Well, it's been close already. And the, the thing is, you talk about the tempo, the pace that Arkansas goes at, and you don't want, that, particularly that defensive line, you want those guys fresh, but they got to, hey, look, if you're getting out, you got to sprint to get off the field. Jefferson. That one's knocked away at the last minute, but a flag comes in. Well, they were trying to hit Jackson with it. Pritchett was in coverage. It looked like a heck of a play defensively, but did he have an arm wrapped around him? There's a long conversation between these two officials. And I think they're going to pick that flag up. There is no foul for defensive holding. Yeah, the Pritchard's able to knock this football away, and you know, this is one that probably KJ wants to be able to be a little bit high with the football. You have a big receiver in Jackson, about 6'2. Talk about a deep slant one on one, and Pritchard's able to make a play on the football. Yeah, Coach Smedic talking about Pritchett in our meetings, been really good and very consistent for them in the secondary. Jefferson goes up top, trying to hit Jackson again. Two flags on the on the field again here. So you're talking about was it a defender lined up in a neutral zone or was there a procedural issue with Arkansas? Offside. Defense number 50 in the neutral zone at the snap. It's a five-yard penalty. The yardage results in the first down. Boy, self-inflicted wounds. Marcus Harris. The guilty party. The junior out of Montgomery, Alabama, transferred in from Kansas. Fresh set of downs now for the Hogs. Boy, nowhere to go that time. A.J. Green is wrapped up there by Colby Wood. Now with seven and a half tackles behind the line for Colby. You see the motion, the jet, the jet sweep motion, and then you have the threat of the quarterback run, but he, it's a give to A.J. Green, and Colby Wooden just runs it down from behind. A.J. over the middle again. Here's Hazelwood, makes the catch, spins out of trouble, but can't spin away for a second time. Brought down there by Pritchett, but a gain of 14 yards and another Arkansas first down. Boy, already been five missed tackles by Auburn's defense today. Arkansas offensively getting on the line, trying to run a little tempo, but since they sub, the officials made them slow down a little bit. Green, he's tripped up. All right, as he got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. Two weeks ago against Ole Miss, the Rebels ran 95 plays. 69 of those plays were running plays. They just kept coming and coming and coming. And without a deep front seven for Auburn, that is just a tough road playing 90-plus plays. Yeah, definitely tough on you, particularly when it's run plays. It's a little different when I talk about having to get after the pass, but all the run, I mean, that, that's a pounding. I've got to go against an offensive lineman, then i got to get off, off the block to make a play. Jefferson keeps it himself. Net right in the middle of that line of scrimmage. Big hit there from Zion Puckett. Something interesting, I mean, you talk about having to be one-on-one. -on -one. Zion Puckett does a nice job of not allowing KJ to be able to break that tackle. And so you saw pressure off of the edge. It opens up in the middle of the field, and Puckett stands up and makes a play for him. Yeah, Puckett plays that safety spot. Creeps up to the line of scrimmage quite a bit. It is third down and seven. Jefferson looking, looking, throws. Flag down in the backfield and another one in the end zone. Two flags come out in the end zone. Matt Landers was covered there by Pritchett in the end zone. 
probably got, I don't know if it was hands to the face or holding, so it might be offsetting penalties on this play and get an opportunity to replay the down. Holding, offense number 62. Passive interference, defense number 18. Penalties will offset. Replay third down. Third down and seven coming up. Again. KJ Jefferson in trouble. Breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle to the five. Touchdown, Arkansas. KJ Jefferson, 13 yards. Dave, there's pressure on KJ right away, and that's really what made him escape the pocket. And we talked about earlier Zion Puckett being able to come up and make a tackle. This time, he's not able to do it. KJ feels the pressure off of the edge immediately, so he tucks it. And you talk about Puckett being able to make that play earlier, one-on-one -on -one in the hole. This time, KJ Jefferson wins and ends up scoring a touchdown. The second rushing touchdown of the day for K.J. Jefferson. Point after is up and good. And it's 14 to three, Arkansas. K.J. Jefferson using all 6'3", 242 pounds to scoot through this Auburn defense. Give his team an 11 point advantage. And welcome back to SEC Football, presented by Allstate. There is K.J. Jefferson. Didn't throw a single football last week. Trying to rest his banged up shoulder. Said this past few days, though, he's been zipping it around. It looks like he is quite healthy with his legs. Two rushing touchdowns today. Well, he's a difference maker, and I think, obviously, when you have him on your team, you feel pretty good about it. This kick will sail into the end zone. Time to get our first update of the day. Let's get you to the studio, my man, Peter Burns. What's up, Peter? What's up, Dave? A lot of football being played, and how about TCU? Horn Frogs found themselves down 14 to seven, but Quentin Johnson going to be playing in the NFL here in a couple of years. That young man, wide open tie ball game there in Morgantown, and on the flip side of it, Ohio State, Penn State. Ohio State looked to be running away with this, but how about Parker Washington? 58 yards of the house looks like KJ Jefferson, strong like bull. 10-7 Buckeyes right now. No one ever uses that term for me, strong like bull. I don't ever hear that. <laughs> one of these days, maybe. Damari Austin gets the carry there. Auburn. They've had a couple of possessions deep in Arkansas territory. They've made one field goal from 46, missed one from 46. And they've, they've attacked this defense on the edge. There you see a speed sweep. They've run at least three toss crack plays. So they're trying to attack this defense on the edges. Coming near side. Big collision there. Right on the sideline. Bumper pull. That's already Bumper's sixth. Make that his fifth tackle this afternoon. Yeah, now and exactly what it was. I mean, it was another toss crack. I mean, another toss play, a sweeping. Bumper pool that time, he's able to run it down, and he finishes with authority there on the sideline. Pool and Sanders, those two linebackers just make tons of tackles. Combined, they're up over 130. Pass is caught on the far side by Johnson. That'll be good enough for a first down. That's a gain of 10. Johnson, the team's leading receiver, averaging almost 17 yards per catch. Inside handoff to the 44-yard line for Hunter. He'll pick up three. Robbie Ashford, the redshirt freshman out of Hoover. Of course, went to Hoover High School. Started at Oregon, transferred in. Hadn't played a whole lot of football. Coach is kind of telling us 
I mean, every snap he takes is a learning experience, and it's he's just growing into this position. It's been really almost three years since he was an everyday quarterback. Tank Bixby. He is tripped up behind the line, will fall forward for a couple of yards. Actually, excuse me, loses a couple of yards. For more on, Robbie, let's go down to Drea. Yeah, Dave, I talked to Robbie Ashford about blocking out all of the outside noise, and he said that the people on the outside don't know the work that this team puts in. We're the ones on the field. It's tempting to read everything, but he's been staying off of social media. He was very honest with me, though. He said he knew how hard the Auburn fans were on Bo Nix. He knows this is a very passionate fan base. He knows he has to perform. Of course, doesn't help things around here when you see what Bo Nix has been doing out at Oregon all year. Definitely doesn't help him. That's the one thing that he definitely brings to you. But he's got to have patience as well and understand where his outlets are in this offense. And I think the more snaps he takes, the more you will see him understanding, hey, look, you know, I know my first option, my second read isn't there. Let me find number three, and then I can take off and run. But, you know, you, you, you can't fault him for being the athlete, having the ability to be able to run the football as well. Stevens will make the fair catch. Great fall day here in Auburn, Alabama. The Tigers trail the Arkansas Razorbacks 14 to three. Both these teams coming off of their bye weeks. Sam Pittman, his team so banged up, they didn't even put pads on. Yeah, I mean, for him, it was basically, hey, look, let's have mental days. Let's have, you know, we'll have a couple walkthroughs. You talked earlier about my quarterbacks not really having any throws, particularly KJ, but, I mean, it was more of a mental aspect for them. Here comes Stevens, and he is hit and dropped right at the 20-yard line, but a flag comes in in the defensive backfield. There's another flag down at the 20-yard line. Yeah, they're going to get Jackson for holding here on that play. Been a busy morning for Steve Marlowe. Holding. Holding. Offense number two. Offense two. Ten yard penalty. Ten yard penalty. First, down. First down. And you can see it here. It's right there. That, that's, that's where the hole uh, happens. It's just a just a play right there at the edge. He kind of loses his footing, and so when he does slips and fall, he pulls defensively, pulls Pritchett down, and so he's trying to run a little screen outside to get one of your receivers in the space, and it doesn't work out well for him. KJ, he's going up top. He's trying to hit Jackson on the run. It's incomplete. It'll be second down. At 17, Pritchett back there in coverage. Boy, Pritchett has been involved in a lot of plays today. He's, he's changed sides as far as being able to go from the left cornerback to the right cornerback. And I don't know if they're targeting him per se, but he's been involved a lot. Little shovel pass inside. Rocket Sanders making guys miss left and right. Now he's to the 25. A flag comes in, though, back in the pile of folks around the 17-yard line. Marcus Bragg had a chance to wrap up Rocket Sanders for about a five-yard loss. Yeah, I mean, he uh, just makes guys miss, and then you see the speed, and I think they're going to get Arkansas here right there at the end for blindside or blocking the back. 82 offense. 10-yard penalty, still second down. Dave, I agree with you. I mean, this this is just a little shuffle pass forward that should have been a five-yard loss. You know, and if it's not for, for the penalty, if it's not for the penalty, he's out the gate. Yeah, Henry came in late. You saw him. But it has been a missed tackle problem today, Drea. 
Yeah, Dave, I talked to Owen Papo about the missed tackles, and he said that it's the little things. When you're playing good running backs, you can't tackle high. You're going to bounce off. Reaching for an arm tackle isn't going to work. He said they changed the language and defensive verbiage this season, but the base defense is the same. There is no excuse for the drop-off. They have to step up. A chance here, second down and long. KJ out of the end zone. He just heaves it up in the air into triple coverage. Batted away at the last moment by DJ James. Hey, I understand believing in my receiver, but that, yeah. <laughs> that, that is triple coverage. And that ball hangs up in the air as well. Talk about DJ James just making a play the highest point, tipping it away. Boy, a stop here, and Auburn should have good field position. And a timeout taken by Arkansas. Derek Hall running around, licking his chops on a long third down. Sam Pittman wants to think about it back in a moment. Hey, tonight, wrap up week nine with SEC football final with Dari Noten, Chris Dorn, Benjamin Watson, and Takeo Spikes. They'll take you through the biggest stories of the day and break down all the games. It's 10.30 Eastern time, right after the Ole Miss Texas A&M game, right here on this very network, and of course, always on the ESPN app. And of course, there are some Interesting games today, Florida, Georgia, down in Jacksonville, Kentucky traveling up to Knoxville to take on Tennessee. And I'll tell you what, the soap opera that is Texas A&M is hosting Ole Miss later tonight. A lot going on in College Station. A lot, not just tonight. Yeah. Third down and 17. They'll run it with Sanders off the left side, and he'll fall out to the 15, well shy of even the original line of scrimmage. So it'll be a punting situation. Boy, that's not a good sign to see the SEC's leading rusher kind of hobble off. Here's Bowers punt. Gets it away. Some pressure came from Auburn. This will hit and take a favorable, I mean, big time Arkansas bounce inside the 15 down to the 12 yard line. Keontae Scott let it go, and so Auburn now backed up. This play on the punt return may have cost Auburn about 20 yards. That's exactly what it did. I mean, as a returner, you've got to be able to. I mean, I understand the first punt was not the, a very good one from, from Arkansas, but that one, I mean, you, you talk about getting it from at the 40 to being backed up against your own in, in your end zone. There's Ashford. The throw near side caught there by Bigsby. He's out over the 10. Give him four yards on that pickup. Ashford today throwing the football. Three out of six for 12 yards. Bigsby's run it seven times for 16 yards. All told, Auburn has 81 yards of offense. Ooh, and that one could have been picked off. Watch Lothrop. That bounced right off of him and almost right into the hands. Well, he's reading the pattern. I mean, he, he they're running a go route on the outside, and as a receiver, you have got to make sure that that corner clears, even if you bump him a little bit, just because you have an out route coming right behind you. And he, he just read the pattern all the way, looking at the quarterback, the steps, and understanding the, the combination as far as the route combination is concerned. And that's how he almost jumped it and came up with the big play as far as the interception is concerned. Third down, Ashford. Boy, he's dancing around, showing you some of his moves. He'll have a first down. Ashford still on his feet. Cuts it to the outside. 
First down around the 45-yard line, and that is what he brings to the table. 34-yard pickup for Robbie Ashford. Dave, it starts up front. I mean, it starts, you have pressure, but his ability to, to be able to have the patience, keep his eyes down the field, and once he breaks contain, Arkansas is caught. They're playing man-to-man, -man, and so nobody sees the quarterback takes off, and, you know, once they do recognize and see that he's already picked up the first down, and right there at the end, he shows you his cutback ability right there against Johnson to pick up more yards. Malcolm Johnson goes in motion, sets up in the slot. Ashford, looks right, comes back near side, has Bigsby. There's a first down. He dives to the 41-yard line. Boy, nice work that time by Ashford. Didn't panic in the pocket, looked around, found Bigsby, 14 yards. And Bigsby was a check down guy, but he had the post. He came off of the post, he had the post. It's one-on-one -on -one with the safety on the outside or corner. You can't argue with a first down either. Bigsby, big hole. It's a race to the end zone, and nobody will catch it. 41-yard touchdown scamper by Tank Bixby. Boy, did Auburn need that shot in the arm. Five plays, 93 yards. Just a minute, 35 off the clock for that touchdown by the Tigers. Andres Carlson with this point after. It was Ashford, then it was Bixby. It's a nice little one-two combo, Deuce. Yeah, definitely a nice combo, and you know, you see Tank just be able to get to the edge. And once he's to the edge, you're not going to catch him from behind. And I agree, that is exactly what this offense needs right there before the half. What's up, y'all? Coming up on the Farm Ridge Halftime Report, we'll get you ready for Georgia-Florida game over in Jacksonville. Also, top 25 scoreboard, including uh, second-ranked Buckeyes actually down to Penn State right now. Let's get what do you see, man, in this one. Oh, man, Arkansas is doing a great job. K.J. Jefferson is healthy, two rushing touchdowns. He's taking advantage of the, the lack of the run game from Auburn. See you at half, boys. All right, PB, thanks. Three minutes and 43 seconds away from halftime. Well, Auburn needed some momentum defensively. They have had a bunch of missed tackles, but they have, you know, held up. Free kick out of bounds, number 26 kicking team. The ball we placed at the 35-yard line. First down. But K.J. Jefferson has obviously been the difference today. Well, he's definitely been the difference, being able to have time to stand in the pocket, you know, and we talk about his ability to make it 11 on 11 so now you have to account for the quarterback because he can run the football and then just being KJ Jefferson I mean he is a big young man to bring down Arkansas came in here averaging almost 33 points a game KJ Jefferson 8 of 11 96 yards he's picked up a couple of those rushing touchdowns Shot the Binion in and running back the freshman, but Jefferson going up top has a man wide open. Matt Landers to the 15, still driving down to the 10. They can't get him on the ground. They finally do. Just like that, Arkansas flips the field with a 55-yard throw and catch. David, you talk about you know KJ. That that was on point. He missed the go route early, but that ball is on point. This time the pass is caught there by Trey Knox. Maybe a yard. He's down to the nine-yard line. Simpson on the coverage. Knox will step aside for a moment. Now you get Arkansas running, slowing down the pace right here, right before the half. And second and goal type situation and so Auburn if you want to preserve some clock you have to start using maybe a timeout or two.
K.J. Jefferson looks, throws it out of the back of the end zone. Warren Thompson was back there, but obviously Jefferson just trying to get rid of it. Taking a look at this just throw and this post route, and, you know, Donovan Kaufman, he gets caught on Landers, and, you know, even he has to hold up a little bit, but that just shows you how open he is on that play. And like you said, they, they cannot bring him down. They're reaching for the football instead of trying to tap him early on. Boy, Landers exploded two weeks ago against BYU, had eight catches in that game, three touchdowns, 99 yards. Back shoulder throw, that one's incomplete. They were trying to hit Keetron Jackson. DJ James back there in coverage. So it's fourth down, and now here comes the kicking unit. And the clock will stop at two and a half minutes to go. And so Arkansas didn't help themselves as far as trying to run some clock off and making Auburn have to use a timeout because both of those plays, they were pass plays, and the clock stopped. 27-yard field goal attempts. Cam Little, 6 of 8 this year. As long as 51, that came against Mississippi State. Good clean snap. Hold is good, and the kick is perfect. So three more on the board for Arkansas. And they now lead it by a touchdown, 2.25 to go. And just looking at that drive, you know, it starts with the kick out of bounds, you know, and so you, instead of you putting them uh, – Tackling them inside the 15 or at the 20, you put them out on the 35. The next first play, they hit you for an explosive play. Now, you are, were able to hold defensively. I mean, but it's just the little things when you talk about just an Auburn team just trying to find themselves. Well, Auburn has done a nice job. We've talked a lot about how well Arkansas runs the football. I mean, obviously the Hawks, second in the conference, ninth in the country in rushing. Held to 72 yards on the ground. Meanwhile, the Auburn Tiger offense has rushed it for 140 yards today, but only 30 through the air. And I think for them, you know, you have to be able to lean, continue to lean on Robbie Ashford as far as his ability to run the football, but obviously getting the football to Tank Bigsby, of course, helps you as well. Let's go downstairs to Andrea. Thanks, Dave. Well, I need everyone to tune in to the next episode of Out of Pocket. That is with me and Alyssa Lang. We'll take you inside the world of sports with laid back interviews, lots of laughs, and of course, Alyssa's signature passion for finding the best food the SEC has to offer. It's Wednesday, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Y'all know Alyssa likes to give me a hard time, so it's always a good time. So when is that again? Wednesday at 7? Just want to clarify, Wednesday at 7? Wednesday, 7, 7 Eastern, okay. 6 Central. All right, locking it in. See if Albert's locked in offensively. After the last possession, resulted in a Tank Bigsby touchdown. Ashford will have to throw it away into the Arkansas sideline. Ashford has thrown for just 30 yards today. KJ Jefferson, 10 out of 15 for 152. Ashford, four out of nine through the air. Here's Bigsby. That'll be out to the 34-yard line. He's a little bit shy of the line to gain. Clock moves, 2.03, 2.02 to go. Boy, Bigsby's hard to wrap up. Yeah, it's it's definitely, hard to get your hands on him. Definitely hard to bring down, and you see him just make people miss and a little angle route out of the backfield. I don't think they were set offensively. Boy, you're looking at a third down and a couple, and now it's going to be third down. For the snap, seven. false start, 77 offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. You know, calling it on your left tackle, but I don't, I don't, I don't think the guys outside tight end as they shifted down. I don't think they were set. And then from an offensive standpoint, you've got enough time where you can still run the football. I know they 
you're going to run at that play, but you've got time where you can still run the football. Auburn has all three timeouts left. Clock running at 135. Four-man rush. Ashford feeling some pressure. Gets it away to Bigsby. Makes a man miss and dives for the line to gain it. He's going to be a couple of yards shy is where they're going to spot it back at the 33-yard line. Sam Pittman runs out there and calls a quick timeout to stop the clock with 121 to go. Yeah, he wants to get his experienced quarterback enough time on the field, but, I mean, you're looking at a fourth down situation, and so that's a heavy gamble. That's a heavy gamble right here, uh, and I think Auburn gets the ball back to start the third quarter. Yep. Arkansas so, I mean, won the toss, and they wanted the football to start the game, so Auburn will have the opening possession of the third quarter. And the Auburn punt team jogs it out. Oscar Chapman will punt it away. Bryce Stevens stands back at the 25-yard line. Oh, this is not a good kick. Boy, that was one of the more awkward punts I've seen. An end over end snap hook that travels 24 yards. Hey, I don't know if he was trying to Aussie style it where he gets some roll on it, but I mean, that one took a hard left turn. And I mean, for KJ, you're almost at, at midfield. You're at midfield almost, and you talk about just hurting yourself. You had. One bad punt, you missed the field goal, kicked the um, kickoff out of bounds, so not help, helping yourself special teams-wise. So the ball sits at the 42-yard line. KJ Jefferson up to Knox. He'll be out of bounds, made the catch, but out of, clearly out of bounds on that near sideline. Sam Pittman telling us that Cam Little, they get it down around the 35, he'd be willing to take a shot with his kicker. Second down and 10. Arkansas with one timeout left. There's a flag down. There's a flag. And it looks like Arkansas wasn't set. Ball starts, offense. Not all 11 players became set before the snap. Five-yard penalty, second down. That is the fifth Razorback penalty for 28 yards. Auburn's had four for 30 yards. We've had uh, a multitude of reviews as well here in the first half, so it's been kind of a choppy first 30 minutes. Second down and 15. KJ Jefferson over the middle, a little low for Jackson. Well, you get a stop here, Deuce. You got three timeouts left. Yeah, you got three timeouts in that time. You're Auburn, you're right? So yeah. you might have a chance to move the football. Yeah, exactly right. Derek Hall has done a pretty good job there forcing KJ to step up into the pocket and they've done a pretty good job of flush, flushing him at times, but I mean, at times that offensive line has locked him down as, as well. Third down at 15. Detroit Jackson goes in motion, sets up in the slot. Four-man rush. KJ Jefferson is wrapped up and dropped at the 35-yard line. Derek Hall, the first one there, the sack master, now has 17 and a half sacks in his 27 games played and has five sacks this year. 
I mean, he just he's able to come off the edge. I mean, his ability to be able to bend, and it, there was a play earlier where he had a shot to make it. It was actually the, the run by K.J. Jefferson that he scored on. He's who forced K.J. to take off earlier on one of those touchdowns. And, you know, you talked about it the previous play. He's, he's been able to line up at left defensive end and right defensive end. And, you know, right there he, he flips sides. And he's able to get the pressure on K.J. Jefferson and comes up with the sack this time. Tavarius Johnson back to return this punt. Auburn took a timeout, by the way, after the sack to stop the clock with 56 seconds. That leaves the Tigers with two. Wobbly kick. Boy, the special teams on both sides today have been a little bit disappointing. See where they spot this. At the 41 yard line. Wow. So he hit the one long one where he was backed up, goes over the returner's head. I mean, but he's had two punts that have not been great. So Brian Harson was telling us today about Anders, or yesterday about Anders Carlson trying to get healthy, get that boom back in his leg. Felt like that is coming along, so maybe stretch him out a little bit if you need need be. Auburn would love to get the six points, though, in the end zone. 50 seconds to go before halftime. Ashford on the run. Flat comes out behind the play. Holding, offense number 68, 10-yard penalty, first down. Troxel, who's been really solid at right tackle. Take another look at it. They're only rushing three guys in there, you know, from a quarterback standpoint, just getting too much push right there in front of you. And we know Robbie Anderson, Robbie Ashford able to break contain and try to make something happen down the field, but it's going to be a holding penalty on the play. Ashford. That ball is incomplete right on the Auburn logo at the 45-yard line. Hudson Clark came in, trying to hit Coy Moore with it. Clark almost stepped in front of that and picked it off. Yeah, and he's playing that, that, that middle field safety position, and so they kind of play a three-deep look when he goes to the middle of the field. And you know, I just don't know if Ashford saw him, did a nice job of hanging in the pocket, but he's got to understand that that middle field safety is going to be there. Three-man rush. Ashford on the run. Pass is complete. Out of bounds goes Johnson. Boy, it's amazing how good he throws it on the run versus when he just stands in the pocket. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it does a really nice job of keeping his eyes down the field. If I'm upset, it's because, you know, my, my receiver, I thought he had a chance to really pick up that first down Yeah. in that situation, but he goes out of bounds, and now you're in a third and short situation. Third down and two and a half. Pass is caught. There's your first down. Cedric Jackson with the reception. That's at the 35-yard line. So now you're in Carlson range. 24 seconds to go before halftime. Those last three, last two throws, he's had really nice rhythm and understanding and knowing where he wants to go with the football as well. Four-man rush this time. Ashford is tripped up right around the line of scrimmage. That'll stop it with 18 seconds. Auburn still hanging on to those two timeouts. And the biggest thing for your quarterback, you don't want him to force anything. You know, we saw him almost force one there, and Hudson Clark on the dig route almost came up with the interception. Just understand, you don't have to force it. That time, Arkansas bringing a fourth guy to the pressure. They've pretty much only rushed three. Looks like that's what they're doing now. Ashford steps up, sees a little room to run, puts on the brakes, and is stopped around the 32-yard line. The 31-yard line is where they'll spot him. And Auburn will take a timeout with 10 seconds. It looked like he had some room to run, and that quickly closed up. 
Uh, when you make the decision to run right there, those linebackers and underneath defenders, they're seeing it as well. And so that time they come right away to be able to stop the quarterback. Both teams have identical 222 yards of offense here in the opening half. And it's really kind of flipped a little bit from what we thought the storyline would be. Only 70 yards rushing for Arkansas. A team that came in averaging 240 yards a game on the ground. Top 10 in the country against a defense that gives up over 200 a game, which ranked 119th. And they hadn't really been able to get Rocket going. It's been more K.J. Jefferson that has made plays for him. And, you know, that's something that they're going to try to lean back on, you know, in the second half. Rocket with 10 carries, 53 yards. Bigsby, 8 carries, 57 yards. So third down coming up. One timeout for Auburn. Ashford down the sideline. The pass is caught inside the 10-yard line, down around the 7. Official has his hat off, so that means he was eligible to touch the football. He got pushed out of bounds. Brian Harson will take the timeout with six seconds. The clock was running. I thought that Brown was out of bounds. He had to hit inbounds. Saw the official that lost his hat. Yep, he did. So Coach Harson uses their final timeout, and he will send out Anders Carlson. I feel like they had a chance to take at least one play, huh? One play and a shot at the end zone? Maybe with a more experienced quarterback here? Six seconds on the clock? Well, I don't know. That's risky. <laughs> That's risky. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't want to make that decision and have the clock hit zeros. Here's a 24-yard field goal attempt by Anders Carlson. And that is through the uprights, and Auburn picks up three to cut the gap to four. 17-13 Arkansas out in front with just three seconds to go before halftime. Nice job on the two-minute drill. You were able to hit a couple throws across the middle. You were able for your quarterback to run a little bit, and then obviously you hit him in the kind of the cover two hole of that defense. Nice job. Don't forget the Auburn Tiger marching band coming up at halftime. You can stream that over on SEC Network Plus. You can start streaming right now. As in three seconds, they'll be charging the field. Boys, well, turned out to be a gorgeous day here in Auburn. Sun peeking out. This magnificent facility, one of my favorite stadiums, Jordan Hare. Do you have any good games in this place? Not a lot of good games here. A, a lot of, you know, you, you come in and it, it'll shock you how loud it gets yes. as well. A little squib kick. That'll take a second off the clock. That's when you went to clock operator, right, just to let that thing just just go. He's, 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 he's tight with it right now. I mean, <laughs> yeah, okay. he's very tight with that clock. <laughs> Talk about maybe getting, you may have gotten two plays off if, if that's yeah, right, the case. Yeah, right. <laughs> if this is how we're going to do it, yeah, right. Yeah. you got to get two plays off, shots at the end zone, and then be able to kick the field goal going out. But, I mean, it's a squib kick, and one second came off the clock. It's, the clock starts once the offensive guy touches it. What do you make of the first half? Mistakes. I mean, just mistakes. You're surprised that Arkansas wasn't able to run the ball better. Yeah, give credit to Auburn, even with all those missed tackles. They will 
Get knocked out of bounds. Just shy of midfield. Matt Landers will pick up some garbage yardage, but he'll take it. Auburn also, Arkansas will also take the 17 to 13 lead into the locker room as it is halftime here at Jordan Hare Stadium. The Hawks trying to snap the six game losing streak to the Auburn Tigers. Their last win back in 2015. Let's go down to Andrea. Coach, Robbie Ashford got going late yeah. in that second quarter making some plays. How do you contain him in well, the second the half? The one that hurt us was a five-play drive down there, went 93 yards. We had him pinned back, and, you know, obviously we, we got the ball to 42 trying to score before half. It cost us three, you know, so we got to get the momentum back. We hurt ourselves with penalties and, and turning the football over. We got to play cleaner. Speaking of that momentum for your offense, how do you get the run game going in the second? Well, I think we've got to run it more. You know, uh, uh, we're, we're throwing it a lot on first down. We've got, to, we've got to go back and run our quarterback a little bit more. Coach, thank you. All right, we'll certainly look for that. K.J. Jefferson may be more of a factor in the second half. But Arkansas leads it by four at the break. Time to get you to our studios. Peter Burns, it is all yours, amigo. Presented by Allstate, the sun out here at Jordan-Hare Stadium, a 17-13 game. The Tigers trying to snap a three-game losing streak. Arkansas trying to snap a six-game skid to the Tigers. Dave Neal, Deuce McAllister, and Deuce, we came in talking about the running backs in this game. Two really good ones in Rocket Sanders and Tank Bigsby. Arkansas in the season has really dominated the run game, over 240 yards a game on the ground, but only 70 in the first half. What's been the reason? Yeah, and I think that's surprising a little bit. You know, they haven't run uh, successfully as far as Rocket. They've had some lost yardage as far as uh, when he's had the football. He's made some plays, but they've hurt themselves and put themselves behind the chain a little bit, and so that's one thing that I think they'll lean on in the second half. Well, we heard uh, going to halftime, we uh, certainly heard Sam Pittman telling Andrea that we got to get K.J. Jefferson more involved in the run game as well. He has a couple of rushing touchdowns today, but we'll see how that plays out. Meanwhile, if you're Auburn, you got to feel pretty good, right? Only down four points here at the first half, and you really kind of had some self-inflicted wounds in that first half. Yeah, you definitely did. I think when you go back and look at it, you had to football your first two drives. You're right there at midfield, and you're only able to cash in really on one of those, uh, one of those drives with a field goal. Take a look at our Pfizer first half stats, and they're almost identical. Both teams ran 38 plays offensively. Total offense, 244 for Arkansas, 246 for Auburn. And uh, both teams certainly had their share of penalties, some special teams miscues as well. Just a somewhat, uh, you know, sloppy might be a little aggressive, but certainly wasn't a clean first half by any stretch of the imagination for either team. Yeah, when you talk about clean or crisp, that's what they want to get back to, and that's all three units. And, you know, you talk about missed tackles, a couple turnovers, possible turnovers there, but Auburn didn't. It wasn't called a fumble, but that's what they got to clean up. Here's Ashford. He's trying to catch the corner and be run out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Andrea. Thanks, Dave. Well, I just caught up with Brian Harson coming out of halftime. He said that his message to the team was keep playing good football. That's been his message all week long. We have to play good football. On the offensive side, he felt very pleased with Robbie Ashford's performance, felt like he played with a lot of poise. Defensively, he said, we have got to tackle better. Yes, seven missed tackles in the first half for Auburn. That helped this Arkansas team put up 17 points. But I thought the last few drives, Auburn's defense started wrapping up a little bit better. Yeah, they definitely started wrapping up a little bit better. And, you know, you started to see them have to throw the football, that being Arkansas. And they hit on a few plays, but, you know, you talk about when they get, got down in the red zone, had to settle for, uh, had to settle for a field goal. And so here, when you look at it, Arkansas defensively, two run plays, one design run, and another one was a pass opportunity. They've done a nice job of bottling up uh, Robbie Ashford. Ashford in the first quarter was one of four for two yards. In the second quarter, he went eight of 11 for 100 yards. Again, flushed out of the pocket, trying to run for the first down. Needs to get to the 35. He does and gets out of bounds at the 38. Gain of a dozen. See the team tackle in stunts, and so there's Blair that has a shot at him before he gets that first down, and he just makes a miss. And so three plays that he's had to take off running the football, and Arkansas on the third time not able to bring him down. Bigsby cuts it back. Number four, take Bigsby. To the 39-yard line, give him a yard. And 
Stewart will get credit for the tackle for Arkansas. Five receiver look for the Tigers, empty set. Pass caught on the outside. That'll be close to a first down. Give him nine for Worsham. Third down and about a yard. See Arkansas defensively check to it. Drop eight coverage as far as zone is concerned. And Worsham does a nice job of just being able to sink and allow his quarterback to come back to him on that throw. Worship's one of those guys, by the way, on the off week, kind of got himself some extra snaps with his performance and effort. Boy, big toss sweep. They toss it to the quarterback. They toss it to the quarterback, and so they bring motion. They bring motion, and you basically are able to toss it to him from that, from that position, and so he turns into basically a, a runner, just a true runner in that situation. We'll put Shaker under center, toss, sweep it to your quarterback. And he'll have the first down at the Arkansas 44-yard line. Boy, Arkansas over, all over that one. Hudson Clark, as soon as Hunter made the catch, Clark was all over him, a loss of two. And he's got it man-to-man, -man. and once you saw him go into that stack formation, just three wides outside, he was he released immediately once he saw the football was passed or thrown to Jacquez Hunter. Bigsby back in the game and running back. Shotgun formation. Pressure comes straight up the middle. Ashford on the run, throws it out of bounds. He was being chased there by Drew Sanders. Chris Paul in there. Yeah, just take another look at it and inside pressure forces him out. Drew Sanders in the outside, like you talked about, Chris Paul is the one that forces him to have to throw the pass away and now it's another third and long situation. Saw the previous one where Robbie Ashford was able to run for the first down. Again on the run. Shinker, the reception and another first down. I'm telling you. There are two different quarterbacks. The one that runs on the rollout and throws dimes right in guys' chest, and the one that, that sits in the pocket and doesn't look comfortable. Well, he, he kept his eyes down the field, and Drew Sanders actually had he had the tight end coming across Stinker, and once he was able, he has to pressure the quarterback. That's where he throws the football. Bixby, nowhere to run. Ball, the big 305-pound defensive lineman out of Atlanta making a play for the Razorbacks. Arkansas's defense been maligned at times this year. They have given up a bunch of yards through the air coming into this one. Of course, we have documented throughout the year the number of injuries that Barry Odom's had to fight through in that back end, getting some of those guys back this week. They'll go through the air again, not much there. So a third down coming up. Auburn nine out of 14 on third downs. They have converted all three third down attempts on this drive. Very methodical opening drive for the Tigers to start this third quarter. Ashford, he is dropped at the 35-yard line. 
Jordan Dominic coming in there and just getting enough of Ashford to trip him up for a, a loss of seven. And Jordan Dominic, he just uses speed off of the edge. And so once he's able to do that, he's just able to trip him up. And so I was wondering, was Arkansas going to bring some pressure? But they stayed with three-man rush, and that time it's just speed off of the off of the edge there by Jordan Dominic, and he's able to come up with the sack. A long field goal, 52 yards by Carlson. It's blocked! And Arkansas will get the football back after the blocked field goal attempt from 52 yards. That'll get folks jumping up and down on that Arkansas sideline. Hey, Monday at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. We'll have a special Halloween edition of Screaming Out Loud. Can't wait to see what that looks like with Spencer Hall and Richard Johnson. they will break down the weekend on the gridiron, talk about the hottest topics for the coming week, preview Saturday's biggest games, and, of course, have some trick-or-treaters stop by. Monday night, 7 o'clock Eastern, right here on the SEC Network. You know, my kids have kind of aged out of Halloween. It's very disappointing for me. <laughs> they still probably hand out the hand out the candy, though, correct? Yeah, but they don't, they're not going to really hand it to me if I knock on the door. <laughs> they might arrest me. I don't think I'll be any candy. Number seven, offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Arkansas with another. You know, the pre-snap. I've seen them have a couple of pre-snap penalties. Well, Sam Pittman said it on the way to the locker room. they got to get things cleaned up. Very disjointed at times offensively. What much of a flow. When this offense is in the groove, man, they are flying up and down the field. I don't think uh, they really had that other than one or two possessions in the first half. And certainly not here as K.J. Jefferson is taken to the ground. Colby Wood with the big play defensively, a loss of three. Maybe if you take another look at it, the offensive line gives them time. But the problem is the secondary does an outstanding job of coverage down the field, and that's why KJ had to hold his football. And Wooden, Colby is finally able to win there at the end. Sanders breaks a couple of tackles out over the 40 to the 43 yard line. So it'll be third, or make it fourth, or third down, excuse me. Quick throw, near side pass is caught there by Matt Landers. Well, that was a nice throw by K.J. Jefferson. 18 yards on that pickup at a first down. Sanders off the right side. Oh, he almost snuck through there. But he'll have another dozen yards, and that'll be a first down. And they go to 13. Yeah, they go with tempo, and, and that time Auburn was not even ready when the ball was snapped. Sanders again. This time he's to the 20 yard line. Maybe you see guys just miss him on the edge. You see the patience. The previous play, they ran a counter to put him in a short situation on third down, and you know back-to-back -back plays. He's he's almost out out the gate on that on those plays. Desmond Tisdale, the linebacker, he is really limping around for Auburn right now. Catch is made there for a first down. It goes to Keytron Jackson. There'll be some substitution. They're going to get Tisdale off the field. Alex, he's going to leave him on there. It's like, my leg is all messed up. K.J. Jefferson to the back of the end zone, and incomplete. Hazelwood was trying to keep a toe inbounds, but could not do so, incomplete. You look at the effort, it's almost like he quits on this ball, and then he goes and locates it, and he just tries to... Toe oh, drag that back line. Just 
from that angle, you can't see it, but the official's right on top of it. By the way, Tisdale does come off the field for Auburn. They'll go inside, handoff, nothing there really. Third down coming up, third down and about nine. They'll need to get it around the three-yard line. Okay, Bridges with the tackle. I'll go empty set here. Three receivers near side, two to the top. Three-man rush over the middle pass, caught touchdown. Jaden Hazelwood. A 12-yard touchdown catch. And the Hawks have put 23 on the board now. David, you talk about K.J. Jefferson, you see the boys in the pocket, and this is this is almost too easy. You see Auburn is late lining up, and that's just one-on-one. -on -one. And I don't know if Zion Puckett thought he had safety help inside, but there was no one in there, and that's just way too easy for K.J. Jefferson. Point after is up and good. Arkansas's lead is 11, 6.02 to go here in the third quarter. K.J. Jefferson with a couple of touchdowns rushing, now one throwing. 24-13 Hogs. Well, we thought we'd see a lot of KJ Jefferson here in the second half, according to his coach Sam Pittman. He's thrown for 210 yards. He's rushed for 15. Three total touchdowns today. A healthy KJ Jefferson is a dangerous man. Well, he's definitely a different ma difference maker for them from an offensive standpoint because now you have to account for the quarterback run and you know, you've seen him be able to throw the football and it's been pinpoint for the most part as far as those throws. Bates will kick it off. Will settle down around the one and bounce into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Well, let's go back to week three. Kind of interesting to kind of peek back into the past and see where we are today as we look at these standings. And, you know, Arkansas sitting there number 10 in the country. You had Georgia number one, Kentucky was up there at eight, and Tennessee was 11, Alabama was two, Florida was 20, A&M was 23. And here's what it looks like today. Arkansas is out of the pole. Tennessee's up to number three. South Carolina has crept in at number 25. Florida's out of the pole. LSU's at 18. They're inside, and Ole Miss is right wherever they were back in week three. But just interesting kind of watch how this plays out all season long. Boy, that one should have been picked off. Instead, it's a reception out over the 35 to the 38-yard line. Cedric Jackson makes the catch to Miles Slusher. I don't know how he didn't get this one. Well, he definitely undercut this throw, and he just can't catch it. He can't get his hands on oh. it right over the top. And you talk about a first down strike for a for, for, uh, first down throw for a strike. Ashford pulls the football and is tripped up. Right about the line of scrimmage. Latavius Brainy making the play. So it'll be second down and 10 coming up. Greeny made that play, but it was Gregory that caused it. And didn't allow Ashford to just get to the edge. Bigsby. It's the hole hard, and will be spotted at the 43-yard line. It'll be third down, and maybe five coming up. Take Bigsby. Eleven carries, 58 yards, actually 63 yards. He's also had six catches out of the backfield for another 37 yards. He came into this one with just 15 catches all year out of the backfield. As soon as Ashford threw that football, he put his hands on his helmet like he knew he missed that one. Yeah, he had Johnson running that out, and he was wide open, you know, and I think this is just footwork. I mean, because that ball is completely behind him, and he knew it 
right away as far as Ashford was concerned. And Johnson, like you said, you, you just caught him in a in that zone that Arkansas runs a little bit, and he missed it. Oscar Chapman to punt this away. Boy, Albert ran a player on late, just set up on the numbers on the near side, so our officials kept crashing in to give Arkansas an opportunity to sub. This kick much better. Stevens calls for a fair catch. That'll be down at the five. And boy, that was close. Stevens almost touched that one. A 51-yard punt. The ruling on the field is that the receiver did not touch the ball. First down, Arkansas. Well, let's see if he did. To, ooh. <laughs> At the last second, pulls that hand back. Back in a moment. Bryce Stevens almost made a fatal flaw here returning this punt. Look how close he was to touching this football. You really can't tell if he did or didn't. There is nothing to say that he did touch it, so the play on uh, the call on the field will stand, but man, is that close. And you're talking about very, very close, but the, it doesn't change as far as the tra trajectory of the football. Here's Sanders, left side, big hole. Looking like Darren McFadden down the near sideline to the 20 yard line and brought down. Puckett finally chases him down. Dave, we talked about the power. We talked about the patience. Here's the speed, and this is long speed. Seventy-six yard pickup. They'll go with him again, dude. Sorry, so you've, you've done this. I'm always curious. Running back just busted for seventy-five yards. And then you come back and your number's called again. Are you like? I'm gassed. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you're, you're gassed. <laughs> uh, Puckett, the slow one to get up now for Auburn. Just taking a look at that, the, the previous run. It's split zone, and he just bounces it outside. They do a nice job of sealing on the edge. And, you know, it was Puckett who actually – Who's, who's injured now, but it was actually Puckett who was able to catch him on the long run as well. And so it was just split zone, and they do a nice job of sealing on the edge. and Back-to-back -back plays, Puckett and Rocket Sanders are involved. Boy, he just got behind those three big offensive linemen. I don't know anybody could see him until he just pops out. And he kind of got lost in there and hit a little bit. So now Sanders with 171 yards on the ground, now up over 1,000 yards. He now ties Madre Hill, the great running back from the mid-'90s, for the quickest to 1,000 yards, done it in eight games. Both of them hit the 1,000-yard plateau in eight games. Darren McFadden never did it. He only did it he, his best year was nine games. That's well, all he could do. That's it. Well, I mean, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you take you take on the personality of your coach, and you know up front that they do a nice job. And I mean, it was his speed. And you go back and you look at some of the things that he did in high school, and so he's still learning that running back position, particularly on the college level. But man, you see, he is explosive. Well, that's good to see Puckett get up. Well, we had a – I think we took up too much of his time this week, Sam Pittman. We, you know, usually get 30, 45 minutes, talk with everyone, talk with his coach. I think we were on the phone with him for over an hour yeah, talking we, about all kinds of stuff. We had a good conversation with Coach, and he's always – you know, he's always good to us. And, you know, he, he'll tell you in a minute, I probably shouldn't say this, but I said, all right, Coach, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, right. it's between us. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, he does that a couple times. Probably shouldn't say this. <laughs> uh, second down and four. Keep an eye on Puckett. Give me an update as soon as we know something. A.J. Green in the backfield. He'll give it to A.J. He has stood up at the 10 and nowhere to go from there. Forward progress will get him a couple of yards. Steiner was the first one there, followed by Derek Hall. 
back-to-back -back plays where they run that little counter. You have the tight end pull in your backside, either guard or tackle. And at that time, Auburn does a better job of being able to make the tackle. Boy, you just feel like closing in on the end of the third quarter, like this is – if they can get a touchdown here, you just feel like the wind will be taken out of Auburn sails. You hold the three, maybe you've got a fight chance, you know. A little pump fake. K.J. takes it himself, and he'll have the first down at the five-yard line. He almost pump faked right into a tackle. Well, and it was a corner crash, and so they run a corner crash. You see Pritchett come off the edge, and K.J. is going to hit Knox out in the flat. And, and by leaving his feet that time, Nehemiah Pritchett, that's why K.J. is able to run and pick up the first down with his legs. They had corner cat into the boundary side of the field, and they were going to throw it to Knox in the flat, but K.J.'s experience, he doesn't throw it, able to pick up the first down with his legs. First and goal, 2-0-4 and counting here in the third quarter. Here's Green. What a nice play on the edge there by Wesley Steiner. He's had a couple of nice plays this drive. Arkansas certainly in no hurry. Don't say that very often with this Kendall Bryles offense. But Rocket Sanders will watch A.J. Green at tailback. Or excuse me, DeBinion. He has stood up. The Binion stays in the game and running back. It'll be third and goal. Maybe I've got to give the option of my quarterback being able to run this football or throw it here. Oh, nice strike to DeBinion, and he will take it into the end zone. A little trickery from the Hogs on a third and goal. You talked about it. This is a direct snap. <laughs> this is a direct snap, so it looks like you almost yeah, you have the triple option or at least the option look from your quarterback, but it's just direct snap and split zone out of the back of it. But, I mean, it freezes Hall. It freezes the defense for Auburn where they can't, they can't make a play. I mean, you see him going after the quarterback, but the ball never goes to him. Point after is up and good. Forty-four seconds to go here in the third quarter, and Arkansas has pushed this out to a 31-13 advantage. Let's go downstairs to Andrea. Thanks, Dave. Well, that touchdown drive was set up by that huge run by Rocket Sanders earlier, and he told me that he spent his bye week going back to Florida to spend time with his son, Raheem Jr., who was born in July 2021, and they look just alike, these two. He said he only gets to see him on breaks, but anything that he does, he does it for his son. He feels like he has to do more. He has a lot of people counting on him, but this little man right here is the reason behind everything Rocket Sanders is trying to do on the football field. Well, so far today, it's been a pretty impressive performance. I think RJ might be proud of old Papa today. Rocket with 171 yards on 16 carries. Sets up that touchdown a moment ago by the Hogs. Boy, the offensive line doing their job as well. Those guys up front really paving the way for Rocket to get his work done. Bates's kick will head into the end zone out to the 25 yard line. Keep an eye on KJ Jefferson here. He's lining up over the guard, but still kind of in the quarterback mode. Watch this. Yeah, I mean, if you're a defensive player, i got to think your eyes are going to be on one, right? Even though he's off center a little bit, he does the hand clap and then spins out like he's still going to run the play. But the direct snap right to Dominion. Well, that's why you, you paused it until initially, you know, our angle, we didn't see that he was not directly behind the center. And so, you know, you're, from a defensive standpoint, you're talking, you're yelling it out, but you you're, your focus is on the quarterback. Ashford will keep it himself. Get up 
four yards on that carry. Miles Slusher with the tackle. Kendall Bryles. Talking about in the off week, some of the things they work on. He says, hey, I'm trying to work on my guy's head to realize how good we can be. Getting those guys just to focus and, you know, making sure in the red zone they can be better in the red zone. And that's plays like that will definitely help those red zone numbers. Ashford. Flag comes out in the backfield. Ashford still on the run, and he'll just throw it away. Looked like Jackson grabbed a hold of an Arkansas jersey. Boy, you could just not just look at the sidelines, but you can kind of feel it in this huge stadium, just the life has been taken out of this. The energy is gone after that last touchdown. You, just, you, you can feel it, and, you know, it's almost like from a player's, the, the reaction Holy of the ball. players. Offense number 65, 10-yard penalty. We play the down. We will extend the third quarter with one on time down. Second down and 16. Second and 16 for the night. Ashford has gone the distance at quarterback today for Auburn. Pass caught there by Coy Moore, and he is tripped up at the 30-yard line, a gain of 11, but that'll be it for the third quarter. It's a 31-13 Arkansas advantage. 15 more minutes of football coming up from Jordan-Hare Stadium here in Auburn, Alabama. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. We are 15 minutes away. Fourth quarter coming up, Arkansas in front 31-13. Tigers have lost three straight. Now, Arkansas had a three-game losing streak, then they went to BYU and just uh, put it on the Cougars 52-35 to two weeks ago. Oh, big hit back at the 28-yard line. Miles Slusher getting his nose in there. That's a loss of two. It's actually pressure off of the edge, and as a quarterback, as Robbie Ashford tried to step up. He runs right into it as far as the sack. <laughs> Whistles will stop the play. Timeout, Arkansas, the first of the half. So Sam Pittman. Something tells me that might be spending a little time on special teams next week. We'll take a break with it back in a moment. My goodness, that might shake things up in the Big Ten a little bit. And in the national picture. Of course. Georgia, Florida going at it today in Jacksonville. I think another game to keep an eye on is certainly Kentucky. You got the team that goes the slowest in terms of time between plays against the team that goes the fastest. I mean, there's like 12 difference between those two teams and the pace at which they go. And can South Carolina make it five straight wins? Well, some big games in the SEC, and you talk about, you know, possibly two quarterbacks that will play at the next level in that Kentucky. Uh, Tennessee game as well. Well, Hendon Hooker has just been a complete dude this year. He has been just so fun to watch. And when Levis is healthy, that guy has been really fun to watch. Handoff goes to the Binion. Well, they are high on Rashad, the freshman out of Cedar Grove High School, just uh, outside of Atlanta, Georgia, Ellenwood, Georgia. He had an offer from right here. 
at Auburn. Also had another one from Florida amongst his teams to choose from, but he just selected the Razorbacks. Jefferson over the middle, pass is caught there. Nice Matt Landers move. That'll get him out to the 35-yard line. 19 yards on that reception. So Landers up over 100 yards in their last game against BYU. Had eight catches for 99 yards. It's the second 100-yard receiving game of the season. His fourth career. Of course, he had a couple of 100-yard games with Toledo. Started his collegiate career at the University of Georgia. Some pressure off the edge. A.J. Green gets a couple of yards. Let's get an update from Andrea. Yeah, Dave, we saw Zion Puckett for this Auburn defense go down earlier. He is still in the tent being evaluated, but it has been labeled as an upper body injury. Yeah, he was down for a while. Let's hope he's all right. He has certainly put all his effort into this one this afternoon. Five tackles and a forced fumble for Puckett. Second down and nine. A nice catch on the outside by Hudson Henry to hang on to that and stay in bounds and pick up a few extra yards in the process. Four yard gain, bring up third down and about four, four and a half. You really see Arkansas running that play clock all the way down and you know, Auburn trying to bring pressure off of the edge, and your quarterback is making the right decision every time. That time, he gets it to Hudson Henry in the flat. Saw it previously where Auburn had blitzed him off the edge with a corner, and he didn't throw it. He picked up the first down himself. Arkansas 7 of 12 on third downs today. They came in at 49% on the year. K.J. Jefferson. He's a little bit of room to run, and he takes off for a big gainer down to the 35-yard line. Donovan Kaufman, the unlucky defender that had to try to bring him down initially. 25 yards. You just have to smile and just shake your head. I mean, because guys his size are not supposed to be able to do this. And his, his offensive line does an outstanding job of just giving him the time. And, you know, your, your defenders, most of those guys have picked up guys in man-to-man -man coverage, and so when it's time to bring him down, it's going to take more than one guy. You'll just have to be impressed with K.J. Jefferson, what he not only brings to this team overall, but just this game as well. Little end around. They give it to Jackson. Cuts it back to the 20. Falls to the 15-yard line. A gain of 19. Talked about the end of round, and you know you, you have Henry that's out front blocking. And Jackson doesn't really use that block. He just turns on the Jets, and they would get up, get up the field, and pick up 19 yards for this Arkansas Razorback offense. And now Deuce, they're up to 242 yards on the ground. They came in averaging 240. And at the half, they had what 70? 70. Yeah. And that's that's like uh, what little RJ, Rocket Son. Hey, Dad, you need to pick it up. Yeah, send him a text message. Stretching it, Dominion to the near side. He's out of bounds, pushed out of bounds there by Wood. See back-to-back -back plays where they're just stretching, you know, from a vertical standpoint. We've seen them throw the football down the field, but be even horizontal. I mean, you, you have to cover all edges of the football field. Sanders with 171 yards on the ground. Jefferson with 45. Jefferson's also thrown for 234 yards, 16 to 24 
He'll hand it off here to A.J. Green. He gets it inside the five. See, right at the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal for Arkansas. Arkansas. They have three touchdowns. AJ Green stuffed there. They'll spot him down around the two. And offensively, they're no hurry. I mean, they, they they want to take care of the football. We want to run clock, let that play clock get under ten, and we'll figure out what we want to do from there. Seven, six. They get the snap off. The Binion off the left side, dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Arkansas. His second rushing touchdown of the day for the true freshman. It is now 37-13, a two-yard scamper from Rashad to Binion. Davis' last touchdown was out of split zone from the shotgun here, and it was a direct snap. This time, K.J. Jefferson hands it off. It's still split zone as far as the run is concerned, and he's able to get into the end zone again. Arkansas came in averaging almost 33 points a game. They put up 38, 735 to play in this one. And the ground game is in full effect here at Jordan-Hare Stadium for the Hawks. But guys. Oklahoma's had a tough go of it. There's four wins on the season. But looking like they might be able to pull something out. 38-13 here. Auburn's got a long way to go. Trying to get back to some Auburn football. This. Uh, Unless things flip in a hurry, this will be four straight losses for the Auburn Tigers. They lost to LSU, a game which, you know, a couple of plays could have been a victory for all chance. Played well against Ole Miss. Nothing there. As we take a look at our All-State Mayhem moment, and this one, how about Rocket? Well, we were supposed to show. This is a nice moment by Tank Bixby, so we'll give him a little bit of that. But a little love for Tank. We were going to show you Rocket Sanders going for 76 yards. See, we had mayhem in the truck. <laughs> that was our mayhem moment. <laughs> Somebody just re rack that and <laughs> do it again. Here's Ashford. <laughs> Pushed out of bounds. Uh, there is Rocket. RJ will be a happy son. Was, RJ was three. Is that what I – how was RJ? Not 100% sure. He's young. Just over one. Yeah. So he's not texting yet. He won't be texting for at least six, seven months probably. Well, he, he's texting. It's just not words that you understand. <laughs> right. It's not going to be what <laughs> right. you understand. Deep over the middle. What a catch there. Johnson with the catch of the day. One-handed grab. I think he kind of batted it and pulled it in. This ball looks like it's got too high, and like you talked about, he was able just to get that left hand out there and able to bring it in. Team's leading receiver with a big catch there. They'll come back here. Another grab on the far side for a first down. That one goes to Cohen Moore. That's a 17-yard pickup. Ashford underneath. 
Camden Brown is hit immediately. Hudson Clark makes his fourth tackle of the day. Arkansas with some quick substitutions as Auburn's going some tempo here with only 6.09 to play. Ashford. He's just going to throw it away instead of taking a loss. I can see, you know, like there's been a couple of passes here in the second half where he wants to stay in the pocket. He's trying, you can see he's trying to. He's just not comfortable yet. Yeah. Yeah, he's just not comfortable yet. And so uh, Andrea talked earlier about how this really being his first year of playing in the last two years, you, you, you get hurt as a senior and then you go to Oregon and you don't play until this is really his first year playing. John Samuel Shanker with the catch. Veteran, talented tight end. Picks up 10 yards there. First at Auburn in. Receptions by a tight end. Third in Auburn history for receiving yards by a tight end. He's had a great career. Four man rush to the end zone and touchdown Auburn. Camden Brown with another circus catch for the Tigers on this drive. That one goes for a nine yard touchdown. Take another look at it, and I mean, he, he just makes a play, a back shoulder throw, and another one kind of bats it to himself. Looks like he comes up with a big time catch as well. Boy, Brown's a good looking young receiver at 6'3, 200 pounds, at a Monroe, Louisiana, but played his high school ball down in Florida at St. Thomas Aquinas. Andres Carlson. Point after is up and good. Coach Harson likes the work of the youngster Camden Brown. It's all but a touchdown, but they still trail by 18. Historic Tumors Drugs down on Tumors Corner on this beautiful campus here in Auburn, Alabama. Not going to be much of a celebration down there this afternoon as the Tigers trail 38 to 20 with just 5.28 to go. Arkansas feeling onside's kick right here. They will spread out, fan out. And there it is. That is picked up by Bumper Pull, and there he goes. Bumper Pull down to the 10-yard line. A flag is down, however, back at the 42-yard line. Boy, Bumper Pool's eyes must have just lit up like they've never been lit up before. Well, he caught it on hop. <laughs> and and you, you're talking about playing shortstop right there, and he caught it perfect. Encroachment, receiving team number 36, came into the neutral zone before the ball was kicked. It's a five-yard penalty. Uh, Bumper's going to be talking to somebody about that. <laughs> well, particularly if he had a score, he would definitely have been upset. Oh, yeah, right on the near side. Look at Jordan Crook. Oh, man, he was 50 yards away from where Bumper picked that football up. Bumper's like, dang, dude. That's one where you can't cross over. You, you have to wait until the football is kicked. I mean, Bumper was going for his first career touchdown. He's had a bunch of sacks. Bunch of tackles. Think about his tackles. He's up to like 426 tackles in his career. The most in Arkansas history. But he was trying to get that touchdown. Get 
That one will just go out of bounds. Nobody even went for it that time. A couple of flags come out. One came out a little late. That didn't go well. It didn't get the bounce, and then it didn't go 10 yards as well. And then it, yeah, I'm just wondering what this – there was a secondary flag that came in. Very late. Did somebody – Hit somebody up high that I didn't see. Illegal blocking. Kicking team number 25. That penalty's declined. Free kick out of bounds, number 26. That five-yard penalty would be assessed when the ball went out of bounds. First down. Steve Marlowe sorting that out for us. 522 to go here. Let's get an update. Peter, what's going on? Well, guys, we've been talking about Penn State having the lead most of the day. How about Travion Henderson? 41 yards to the house. Buckeyes take the lead. And then in a span of just, what, 34 seconds, they scored again. Cage Stover with the touchdown. Buckeyes pulling away 30-21. to 21. That's what good teams do. Backs against the wall, step on the gas. Ohio State looks like they're going to hold on against the Nittany Lions. K.J. Jefferson still out on the field. See his numbers today. 279 total yards for the Arkansas quarterback. We'll run it with A.J. Green off that right side. And they'll just try to get this clock ticking. Boy, if you're Arkansas, you know, they had a three-game losing streak last year. Got to their bye week, turned things around, went four down the stretch. Coach Pittman. Referenced that a couple of times this week and hoping the same thing happens here because they now have three straight home games, and they've got a tough one next week, man. They get Liberty, who's on the cusp of breaking in the top 25. Liberty at 7-1 and one under the direction of Hugh Freeze going into Fayetteville. They better be on their toes for that one. We were... I guess we were joking. I don't know how much Coach Pittman was was joking about who who scheduled your non-conference games. He said, "What me? <laughs> Cincinnati, Cincinnati, BYU, Liberty, and of course Missouri State is no FCS slouch at all." Coach Bob Bobby Petrino gave Arkansas all they wanted, but that's what's left for this uh, Arkansas team with that LSU game shaping up to be a fun day of football. And, of course, Ole Miss at home as well. And you, you wrap things up on the road at Missouri. Tom out on the field. We'll take it as well. 429 to play. Hey, tonight, wrap-up week nine with SEC football final with Dari Noka, Chris Doring, ben, Benjamin Watson, and Takeo Spikes. They'll take you through the biggest stories of the day and break down all the games. 1030 Eastern, 930 Central after the Ole Miss-Texas A&M game right here on the SEC Network. And, of course, you can always see it on the ESPN app. Malik Hornsby. It's his first appearance here at Jordan-Hare Stadium as he checks in at quarterback. By the way, Arkansas with over 500 yards of offense today. It's the first time this year that they've had 500 yards against an SEC opponent, but the third time overall. They had 644 two weeks ago against BYU, 597 against Missouri State. They also, for the program best ninth straight game, have a 100-yard rusher. Now six of those nine 100-yard games have come from Rocket Sanders who has 171 yards on the ground. They've looked good. You know, you, you talk about it offensively. Um, I mean, it starts with K.J. Jefferson, but they, they have looked good. And defensively, we know that you're missing some guys on the back end, and you've done a pretty good job of bottling up this Auburn offense. But, I mean, I think the biggest thing you, 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 when talking to Coach Pittman is those guys being fresh and really taking advantage of it. He talked about it during their bye week of, you know, really not hitting and making sure from a mental aspect they, they understood and knew exactly what they wanted to do, and it's shown today. Arkansas will have the first down. Tegna with the carry around the edge. 
Everybody getting some work right now. We're seeing James Joyner in at running back as well. And also talking about playing some of those young guys on that offensive line is also. Hornsby keeps it himself. He is tripped up and dropped right there at the line of scrimmage by J.D. Rim. Yeah, don't forget, coming up, Missouri, South Carolina, Gamecocks. Trying to push that winning streak out to five games. I don't think anybody had them sitting at five and two right about now. Well, when you, you surprise Texas A&M and you're able to do it did against him. I mean, I think that changes a little bit how people view you. And Kentucky. Let's not forget about that win. I know Will Levis wasn't there, but still a great win for Shane Beamer's club. Let's come down. I think before you had the offsides, it may have been delay of game. Before the offsides, the delay of game, offense, number four, five-yard penalty, still second down. Whistles and flags again. A lot of whistles. <laughs> and Arkansas moving backwards. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Second down. If you're Brian Harson, though, you know, you're going to be left scratching your head again when this one's over. This will be four straight losses. You're at Mississippi State next week. Then you get Texas a and m Joiner on that carry. Nowhere to go. Auburn will. Use a timeout with 2.49 to go, but they are now out of timeouts. But here's what's in store for the Tigers coming up. And I mean, this has just been a tough, tough, tough run for Auburn and their fans. Had some players leave the program this week. I think three guys have left. And, you know, every coach comes in and they – kind of want to get their roster set. So I'm not surprised that there are guys leaving. It's just kind of maybe the timing of it all that kind of makes you scratch your head a little bit. Well, the fellow, a lot of guys also, it's I can play in a certain amount of games, but then after that, I'm going to retro. And so a lot of times you've seen that happen, but, you know, the timing never helps the team when when guys do do it in that in that type of situation. Is tough right now. I mean, anytime you put on an Auburn helmet or an Auburn hat, you're set on the sidelines inside the stadium. Expectations are you're going to win ball games. That's just that's what comes with the territory. And when you don't, fans, alumni, students, they let you know. Just walk around campus last night like I did. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, the expectation is it's, it's not eight wins. Yeah. That's definitely not the expectation. 
And, and like you said, when you don't win, it, everybody kind of lets you know. I think Arkansas is going to let this play clock run all the way down. It looks like they're going to call a timeout as well. You know, I, and I would say this, and it's certainly not for a lack of effort, you know, even Brian Harson I mean, really felt like they had a really good week of practice. Guys were locked in. They just probably don't have the numbers you're going to see, as we saw really against Ole Miss, just down the stretch. They ran out of gas a little bit. You know, they got off to a great start against LSU, just couldn't hang on down the stretch. Some self-inflicted turnovers kind of hurt them in that game as much as anything. It's just a tough time. Meanwhile, Arkansas, they're going to go back-to-back -back victories now after that three-game slide. Pittman certainly has taken them to some places they hadn't been in a while as they were ranked top 10 earlier this year. Well, to even he'll tell you, hey, look, you know, we, we aren't where we want to be. We still have to get better, but he feels really good about his team as well. And a healthy K.J. Jefferson is a big part of that. And obviously having number five in your backfield doesn't hurt either. By doesn't, doesn't, hurt you, <laughs> no. doesn't hurt you at all. So a 37-yard field goal attempt coming up for Cam Little. He hit from 27 earlier. And this one is hammered through the uprights. Sam Pittman lets you know. So they'll take the three, make it a 41-20 game. Remember our Mayhem moment, we're going to show you some Rocket Sanders highlights. Well, here they are now. And they are good ones. This little counter has the patience, ability to break tackles. And a lot of times it may not look like he's moving very fast, but he's moving. He's moving pretty good. It's a long run here. Not a bad day. Not at all, and you don't even have 20 total carries. You're able to go for 171, and I know it was aided by the 76 yard. I mean, we can say that about Bo Jackson's <laughs> career, right? He had he was always aided by a 75 yarder every game. Correct. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, they happen all the time. I don't think you're aided. I think that's just part of the plan. My first time in this stadium. I was a student at Florida State. Came up here, I believe it was 84, may have been 85, somewhere in there. My dad was calling the game for TBS. Florida State was here against Auburn. And watching Bo Jackson and Brent Fullwood. It was like a close game. I can't remember. It was like a touchdown difference, maybe a field goal or something at halftime. And in the second half, Bo Jackson, my first time seeing him in person in this place, it was one of the more amazing experiences I've had watching football. It was unbelievable. Uh, I mean, every time I come in here, that's what I think of. was an electric player. They ended up beating Florida State by like 40 that day. <laughs> <laughs> that was pre Dion, I think. A little bit before Dion, but Bo was a special player. Ashford gets it off to Hunter. There was a couple of summers ago, right before COVID, I got to play like back-to-back -back golf tournaments with Bo, same group. He was one of the greatest athletes in the history of mankind. Tells you that he that I am absolutely the worst putter he's ever played with. I don't know how to take that. It's like maybe he's played with some really good players before, <laughs> or maybe I'm just that bad as a putter. The things that he do, normal normal people, even athletes, you know, it's just like that's not normal, Bo. They could use a little Bo Jackson right about now in the Auburn program as we get down to one minute to play in this one. Ashford, by the way, 22 of 31, 225 at this point. We'll dump it off underneath to Hunter. 
Hunters to the 48-yard line. And it'll be right at that first down line. Let's see what they do with it. They're going to move the chains and give them a first down. Arkansas is going to snap the six-game losing streak to Auburn. The one up top has a man and another nice catch there. Camden Brown. He'll be down at the two-yard line. A 50-yard pickup. Boy, Brown's made some nice catches today. And it was almost like Kari Johnson didn't think he would throw it. It's just a go route, and you see him try to pick it up, but it's too late. First and goal. Hand it off to Hunter. He is stopped at the goal line. And remember, Auburn out of timeouts. It's all about pride right here. Clock down to eight seconds, seven seconds. We'll try it again with Hunter, and he'll scoot into the end zone with four seconds. Jacquez Hunter, you were not going to bring him down on that play. I mean, he got a little crease to do a nice job on the backside and untouched. Point after is up and good. A nice late game drive for Auburn. so hard to look ahead in this league, but start thinking about next week's games. There are some on the board that could have major impacts on what happens in the world of college football. Tennessee taking on the Bulldogs in Athens. That will be a 3.30 kick. By the way, just start doing the math on that uh, touchdown. There's some folks out there that were hoping for it. Yeah. Coach Harson may not know that, but he's got some folks out there smiling, I think. Yeah, I mean, his players, they didn't stop playing for him. And obviously, you know, for Arkansas, they, they played hard. Coach Pittman the whole game. They just line drive that kick right to bumper pull. Yeah, that was bumper. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get to run with this one. Sorry, Bumper. And offensively, they've got to run another play to take a take a knee here at the end. KJ Jefferson finishes up his day 16 to 24, 234 through the air. He also rushed it for 45 yards, 520, uh, 524 yards of offense for Arkansas, 468 for Auburn. But it's the 290 yards rushing. That was the separation point between these two teams. And that's after that's after 70 yards allowed by Auburn in the first half. Yeah, you talked about, uh, you know, Coach Pittman talked about running KJ a little bit more. Where they, they came out and they threw it a little bit, but it was the big runs, the big plays. And, you know, at the end, they just grinded, grinded out. And it looks like. <laughs> what in the world's going on? Arkansas, do they have too many players? Yeah, they had too many players on the field. Illegal substitution, offense, 12 players in formation, five-yard penalty, first down. That's because that's Rocket ran out there. <laughs> well, there have been some penalties today against both these teams. Nine for Arkansas, six for Auburn, and that'll do it. Malik Hornsby takes the knee. So Arkansas picks up the win.
They will go to 5-3, and three, and they will get set to host Liberty next week weekend. Meanwhile, Auburn falls to 3-5, and five, and their losing streak is now four straight, and they will be on the road at Mississippi State next Saturday. Second half, this Arkansas offense figured things out and got it trucking. Oh, yeah, they were able to run the football. You, you had some big plays and throws down the field, and they just made plays. And it really, separation started in the third quarter. And you know, they, they put this Auburn team on their heels, and they never were able to recover. And Brian Harson left to just kind of figure things out again. They will get back to it, and they will grind, I'm sure, to get ready for the Bulldogs. Let's go down to Andrea. Coach Pittman, 70 rushing yards in the first half, 220 in the second half. What was the difference? Well, you know, we hadn't won the third quarter maybe all year, and we challenged them at halftime. It was a four-point game to win the third quarter, and I think we shut them out in the third quarter, maybe scored 14 and basically put the game away. But... That's all about the physicality, the runners, the blockers, all that stuff. And I was really pleased with how they came out in the second half. Speaking of physicality, Coach, you let K.J. Jefferson get a lot of rest during the bye week. How would you describe his performance today? Well, I thought he did pretty good, you know. And, and I'm so proud of him. He's tough. And he's Superman. He's, a, he's our leader, you know. And, uh, and he leads well. I'm very, very, very happy for him and the football team. I know for your defense, you talked a lot about yeah. playing smarter and getting those mental reps. What would you see from that unit today? I thought we did a lot better today. You know, we had a little bit of uh, three plays in the first half that crushed us. And then when we had our ones in, we played pretty good in the second half. And then obviously we needed to get some of our kids some uh, playing time on offense and defense. And we gave up a score because of it. But that's irrelevant. The time the kids got a chance to play is, is, is more important. And you all started three-game home stretch with Liberty next. You made a run this time last year. What will it take to make a run again? Well, we've made two now. You know, we've, we've won on B, at BYU and at Auburn. Now, we talk about it. You know, it's a big deal for us. Uh, we're not bowl eligible. The next one, you have an opportunity to get bowl eligible. That would be a, a huge deal for us. And then after that, it's just which one do you go to. Congrats on the win, Thank Coach. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Go on. Thank you, Andrea. Coach Pittman heading back to Fayetteville. Be a Fun ride back for those boys. KJ Jefferson, he had another heck of a game. 41 27, our final score. For Deuce, Andrea, the rest of our crew, I'm Dave Neal saying so long from Auburn.